In this video, we're going to demonstrate one approach to creating a 3D printed housing for this. This represents a motor. So uh, it's my motor, motor housing, and a shaft that's running 90 degrees to my motor. So this is something just to give you an idea of how you can create a 3D printed uh, housing around an object. It doesn't have to be a motor, but in my case, it is. Okay, the first thing I want to do, I'm in a part here. I'm actually going to go and create another part. And I'm going to create a third part. This first part, I'm going to rename. I'm going to call it Top Housing. And the third part, I'm going to rename bottom housing. Let me see where I'm going with this. So we're going to create our top housing, our bottom housing inside these parts. Now, I already have a part here. This is, I'm going to rename it to motor bodies because that's what's going to be inside there. So I have a motor in here already. That's this motor. And I want to make a couple of copies of this. Now, the first one I want to do just a straight up copy. So I'm going to right click that and say copy. I'm going to copy everything. Say OK. I'm going to make this my active body. Say paste. So I'm going to take this motor and I'm going to rename it to motor template. And I want to call that template because. I'm going to keep that copy as is. Then I'm going to take this motor and I'm going to create a clone of this motor. I'm going to call this one motor clone. Now, why did I do that? Let me explain briefly why I did that. So I want a motor and I want a copy of that motor. When I change this original motor, the copy will not change. When I change this original motor, the clone will change with it. So we'll end up with changes happening to this motor and to this clone, but leaving this template alone. We're going to use the template to size into the housing so we can see how the housing is fitting. And we're going to use the clone and the motor to cut out the top housing and the bottom housing. And the reason we're not going to do it all with one motor is if you take it out of the top housing and then you take it out of the bottom housing, subsequent changes are only going to change in the last uh, Boolean. They won't change the first one. It's just the way that FreeCAD works. So you want to have a clone to be able to use two separate pieces. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll create the housings and you'll see where I'm going with this. Okay, so to create the top housing, I'm going to make that the current part. I'm going to create a new body in there. We'll rename that body just to keep everything the same. We're going to call that top housing body. And then we're going to create a sketch in there. And I want to create it on this plane. That's my XZ plane in this case. And I'm just going to make a rectangular shape that encompasses the entire body. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this symmetrical. And I'm not going to make this symmetrical because it doesn't necessarily, it isn't necessarily symmetrical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dimension from the center down to that edge. And we'll call that 27. Just rounding that figure up. And then we're going to dimension this side. We'll call that 50. And we'll dimension this side. And we'll call that 44. And there is my representation of my housing. And if I turn off this, you'll see that it is 
around central part of that motor. So we're going to close that, a fully constrained sketch of course. Now we're going to pad that, and I'm actually going to pad it in reverse. So I'm going to make the bottom part first. And I know that this is 15 thick, so 10 will leave me some in the bottom there, because this only needs to be 7.5. So I will OK that. And that is the bottom part. So I'm going to make the top housing the current part. Going to create a body. Going to rename that body to bottom housing body. I'm only doing that just to keep it straight. You don't have to rename it if you don't want to. That's entirely your choice. And we're going to make this on that same plane, that XZ plane. And I'm going to make it exactly the same size. I'm just going to go from here down to here. I'm going to use that sectional view so that I can do the same dimensions. We're going to dimension from here to here. And we'll make that 27. That over there, we're going to make this symmetrical. We're going to mention this side. And we made that 50. And we're going to mention this side. And we made that 44. And now we'll say close, and we'll pad that one. And we can pad that 10 as well, so that's fine. So, OK. So now I have a bottom housing and a top housing. Now the interesting part comes in, and this is where we're going to take away the motor. And we are going to take away that motor from the top housing first. So let's do that. Let's go into the top housing. Let's select our top housing body. We are going to create a Boolean. And we are going to add a body. And we can use the motor clone for that one. And it's going to be a cut. And we will cut it. Now, if we turn off our other bodies, let's just do that real quick and turn off our motor body, motor template, and our bottom housing. Now you can see that it cut out that motor. It cut out the motor clone from our top housing. Now I'm going to switch off my top housing, switch on my bottom housing, switch on my uh, motor bodies, or just actually just this motor is what I want. I'm going to make my uh, bottom housing my current part and my active body. I'm going to do a boolean, going to add a body, I'll select that body which is the motor this time, and I'm going to cut the motor from that part, and there you can see. We made a cut out. Okay, now that looks great, except for if I now turn on my motor template, you can see that my motor fits in there absolutely snug. So we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the motor and we're going to change it. And we're going to change it to provide some clearance. Now remember, once you use that motor in a Boolean, that motor is now going to be showing up inside the Boolean operation. So here's the motor right here. And I can still go in and make modifications to it. So we're going to do that right now. So let me turn off this motor template. I'm going to go into, I'm in the bottom housing. I'm going to go into my motor. And I'm going to go into my first sketch. Open that up. So this 
sketch is of, let me just turn off that bottom housing. So this sketch is of the circular part. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to make that dimension 12. So I'm actually making it bigger. And then I'm going to go into the sketch. I'm going to say OK for that sketch. Close that. I'm going to go into the sketch for the body. So this is 15, so I'll make that. Actually, I'll make it 17, give it a millimeter of clearance. And I'll make this one 22. Each one getting a millimeter of clearance. We'll close that. And then the final one is the shaft. The shaft is six millimeters, so I'm going to make it, I'm only going to make it seven millimeters, just give it half a millimeter of clearance. So now if we turn everything back on, I turn on my bottom housing, and I turn on my top housing, and I turn back on my motor template. Remember, my motor template hasn't changed in size, so now you can see clearly that there is clearance around that shaft. If I turn off my bottom housing, you'll see that there's clearance around the part. Now, if I want clearance on the ends here, all I need to do is to change the amount that the pad goes. So let's just have a look at that. For instance, this is the, the pad length for this. So if I change that length, to 21, two maybe, that probably needs to be 21. There you can see I've already changed the clearance. And the way that it works, because the other part is a clone, if I turn off my top housing, oh, sorry, my bottom housing, turn on my top housing, I'm sorry, turn on my bottom housing. <laughs> Let me get my bottoms and my tops mixed up. There you can clearly see it creates the, the clearance there. So we can do the same thing here if we want to. And we have clearance all around here. Now, obviously, if we wanted to, we could take this housing and say, OK. So now that's the part where my wires need to run out of here. So I could equally turn off my motor template and Let's just close some of these up. So I have my bottom housing here. Make that current. Create a new sketch. Sketch it here. Say OK. And then turn that halfway through. And then I want to make, let's say, just a channel for the wires to run out. So I'll just do it like that. I'm not going to bother dimensioning it. I'm just going to close that. And then I can pocket that. And that gives me a channel then that my wires run out of. You get the picture. So then if I close the top housing, now I have a channel where the wires are going to come out the end. And if I um, knock that off, you can see. I have my clearance. I can put my motor back in, my motor template back in, so I can see how that's going to fit. And now that will fit quite well because this could actually slide a little bit that way because I've got a little bit of clearance on the end there. And that'll allow it to fit in there nicely. And I've got clearance on the sides. I've got space for my wires to run out the back. I've got clearance on the hole that pops out here. And of course, if I wanted to fit these together, I might want to put some screw holes in there or something. So when I have my top housing on, I might want to have some screw holes in the corners to hold it together. I might want to do some detailing around the outside edge. But this is really just to give you the technique so you can create housing for anything. Um, and you can create it by creating the, the copy of the original and a clone of the original. 
and then just modifying the original uh, to make the clearance. So hopefully that's a, a useful technique for you. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. There are now 29 of these beginner videos that help you to get from downloading FreeCAD to actually creating some useful models and showing you some techniques that you can use um, to create things. And uh, hopefully you'll take those techniques and run with them and, and modify them and use them in the way that works for you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Feel free to reach out. I do my best to answer all the questions and uh, respond to comments. Uh, again, thanks to everybody for uh, subscribing. We've reached our 10,000 subscribers now. Hopefully that will just keep on going. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. If you have anything that you want me to do, particularly in a video, feel free to leave a comment. Again, I'll, I'll do my best to create the videos that you want to see. Thanks. I've created a new channel for home loans. My day job is I'm a home loan advisor and I wanted to simply share information about how you calculate your maximum mortgage, how you calculate your mortgage payments using the same kind of techniques I use in this channel to be able to help people to understand all the information about their home loan and all the things about pre-qualification and getting the home of your dreams. If you're interested, please take a look at the channel. Consider subscribing. I'm trying to grow that channel so that I can help people with their mortgages uh, just as much as I help people with free cat. Thanks.